Konnichiwa, Atsenpai desu. In the last video, I shared with you Kohai's a few tricks to elevate your drawing instantly. I'm glad that the video is well received. Well, who doesn't like instant tricks, right? I myself would like to know if there are any tricks to get rich instantly, other than selling fake Chinese DVDs. Since you Kohai's liked that video so much, here's the sequel of it. If I were to choose one black magic spell as my Hisatsu Waza, this is my number one pick. Just like how Naruto picked Rasengan and how Ichigo picked Getsuga Tensho. If you Kohais have seen enough good illustrations, you will notice that many professionals tend to shade a large layer or area of shadow over the character. The reason is because a good illustration will have a very defined area of contrast between light and shadow. The drawing will look very muddy if the areas and boundaries of the illustrations are unclear and jumbled up. Besides, having a layer of shadow also makes the character look more three-dimensional. Once you have done that, you can then proceed to color the skin, hair, etc. From there, add the remaining important shadow like the bang shadow, the clothes shadow, etc. Then finally, finalize the drawing by adding the details. Many of you tend to shade your character like this. Firstly, I would like to clarify that this illustration is in fact very well drawn, and I like it very much. Nice. However, Akizakun, you can take this illustration to the next level easily just by casting this simple black magic spell. Can you notice the difference? I did nothing extra other than adding a large layer of shadow to your character. This simple step alone can make so much difference to your drawing. Be sure to try the spell out, my fellow wizards. I'm a what? This is actually a very popular black magic spell among professionals. Line art represents the edge of a two-dimensional shape or a three-dimensional form. Line art is part of the object itself, and we should not treat line art as a separate thing. Thus, by changing the line art's color according to the object's color, we could blend the line art into the drawing, so that the line art and the object could come together as one. To demonstrate my point, here's a simple drawing. For those who don't know how to change the color of the line art, here's what you need to do. Firstly, go to your line art layer. Click on the alpha lock to lock the line art layer. For Photoshop users, it's this lock icon right here. And for Clip Studio Paint users, it's this similar lock icon right here, just beside the layer. By locking the line art layer, you can choose any red brownish color you like. Then, proceed to change the color of the line art at the skin area. By doing this, the skin line art and the skin itself will blend into a single entity, and this would help you to harmonize your drawing. Do the same thing for the hair, clothes, etc. Since Yai Miko has pink hair, I decided to go with maroon for the line art. As for the eyes, I'm going with dark purple. For the part where the light is very strong, it's recommended to completely erase the line art. This is the before and after. A big difference, isn't it? Chotomate. Before I explain the steps, I would like to clarify what Terminator means. So for those who don't know what the heck is a Terminator, please click this shading tutorial video right here. Now, I assume everyone who's watching right now knows what a Terminator is. Yes, it's the line that separates the light and the form shadow. In theory, that is the correct definition. But when it comes to practice, we don't have to follow the theory exactly. Nani? This is a black magic trick that many professionals use, but they don't exactly publicize it. Because this black magic trick is too... Yabe. Yeah, for example, this drawing is a solid 7, but if you apply this black magic trick, it becomes a 10. Really? What if I apply this black magic spell on my drawing? What would my score be? A 1. What? Does that mean my first score was 0? Or oh, it started from negative? Kora! Jokes aside, allow me to demonstrate how to cast this black magic spell into your own drawing. Because if it's not casted properly, your drawing will be deformed. This spell is best casted on the skin and the hair area. For the skin, choose a high saturation color and simply apply it at the terminator. For instance, at the boobs or this part of the hand. This can enrich your drawing by making it more colorful. But you guys have to be careful not to destroy the overall light and shadow harmony. What is this light and shadow harmony, you ask? And how do we measure it? This is where our fourth black magic spell comes in. The main purpose of this technique is to check the overall harmony between light and shadow in the drawing. Firstly, create the layer. Then, fill that layer with black color. Next, change the blending mode of that layer to saturation. With this, we can then turn our drawing into a black and white mode. A good drawing will have a very distinguished and balanced white, grey, and black composition. In other words, 
this means that the execution of the drawing's light and shadow areas is well defined and clear. Look at this example from earlier. To prove my point, let's turn this illustration into black and white mode. Do you see it? The execution of the light and shadow areas is absolutely on point. Remember this, when it comes to shading, the shadows should be adequately dark, like 2 or 3 tones darker. Same goes for lighting, it should be 2 or 3 tones brighter. Then, we can use this saturation layer to check the overall harmony and composition to make sure your shadow is not too dark and your lighting is not too bright. Everything has to be perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Now, back to the question from Blackmagic Spell number 3. How does this black and white layer help us to determine how saturated the color at the terminator should be? The thing is, it's really hard to deduce how saturated the color should be, because we're not computers. Here's what I usually do. So right after I apply the highly saturated color for the core shadow at the terminator, I'll toggle the saturation layer to check the brightness and hue of the selected color. For instance, this reddish color I chose for the skin. If they have the same gray color after I toggle the layer, it means that the highly saturated red color has the same brightness as the skin. And this tells me the color I chose is okay. By this logic, they will share the same saturation and brightness. By changing the hue, your drawing would be more enriching and attractive. Be creative and keep experimenting with the colors, my fellow wizards. I'm a what? Allow me to demonstrate how the average artist shades. So here's your illustration. You have filled the base color for all the parts, from the skin to the hair. Now you want to shade the skin, so you use the eye droplet tool to select the base color of the skin. The color wheel pops out, and you move your pointer straight down to the deepest layer of hell to pick this god-awful color as your shadow. You repeat this process for all the remaining parts like the hair, the clothes, etc. A few moments later. You look at your finished work and you ask yourself, why does my drawing look so dirty? Then you quit drawing and never pick up your stylus again. Hashtag relatable. Many of you think that the shadow should always be black because shadow is dark. Well, theoretically speaking, you are correct. But dark doesn't necessarily mean black. Choosing colors that are close to black would really make your drawing look dirty, especially colors like yellow. When choosing a color to shade, Here's a small tip. Instead of moving your color palette straight down like this, try to move the hue first to increase the hue. Next, move your pointer to the right to increase the saturation. And finally, move it down to increase the darkness. Just a bit though. Let me share my preference when it comes to coloring the skin. In general, the base color of the skin is between yellow and orange. When I choose a color for shading, I would usually go with orange as my first pick. Do not select dark yellow. And when a darker purple is needed, I move to pink followed by red. As for the darker shadow, it would be purple. Do you guys see the pattern here? This is the color formula when it comes to coloring a yellow object, especially the skin. The selection of the shadow's color should be around this area. Do not go beyond that. I'll talk more about color in my upcoming color tutorial video, so please look forward to it. And that's all for today's video. I hope you guys learned something. Make sure you try all the black magic spells that I've taught you guys and cast them in your drawings. Remember this, you're not going to improve if you don't take any action. So what are you waiting for? Go practice! Please drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter. DM me if you want a commission from me. Alright, that's all from me. Jana Kuhais.